Hey everybody, welcome to my first video on demand and supply schedules. Uh, this is for people in principles of econ classes, obviously, by the title of the video. And in your book, you're going to see stuff like this pretty often. Where there's this table with prices and quantity supplies and quantity demanded. I usually, I, I'll be honest, I sometimes forget to teach you about these entirely because I'm too busy drawing lines and stuff. But what these are, are a chance for you to avoid doing math. These quantities linked to these prices represent equations or different values that come out of an equation. And so what this is going to look like is if you were to plot each price quantity pair on a graph, you would see something like this. If the price is 15, the quantity supplied is 10. Let's see. Here's the quantity axis, the horizontal axis, and it goes up to a price of 15. If the price is 15, the quantity demanded is 70. Price of 15, way over to 70. There it is. Let's pick a different point. Equilibrium happens when the price is 30 and the quantity is 40. And look, there's an equilibrium when the price is 30 and both quantities are 40. Quick side note, that is always how you can spot an equilibrium in one of these tables. You don't have to look for the x of the graph. You look for the point where the quantities are equal, because that is the x on the graph. Now, I want to go a little bit farther with this, because that's kind of all there is to these. If you understand the graphs, then just know that these are plots of the graph. Now, moving on to something a little bit more involved. Let's leave the graph out of it for now. What if I were to look at one of these schedules and I were to want to figure out shortages and surpluses? Well, we know that a shortage happens when the price is low. So for our shortage, we're going to start at the lowest prices. And we know that a shortage is equal to the quantity demanded minus the quantity supplied. So we're demanding 75 units of a good. Suppliers supplied 35 units of the good. There are 40 left. People are demanding 40 more than what are actually existing. That's a shortage of 40. And then we can do the same kind of thing in each of these. 70 minus 38 is 32, and so on. We trace these all the way up. Notice that when you're in equilibrium, the shortage is zero. Now, let's look at surpluses. For surpluses, you start at high prices, and it's the quantity supplied minus the quantity demanded, 62 units supplied, 30 units wanted, 32 units left over. 59 minus 35 is 24, 16, 8, 0. Again, notice the surplus is 0 in equilibrium. This equilibrium point is really special because it doesn't have a shortage or a surplus. Now, if we look at surpluses, we know that the pressure on prices is that it's going to fall. And if we look at shortages, we know that prices are going to rise. And that's pretty much all I really had to say in this video. I know it's short. It's because I've already talked about shortages and surpluses. I've already talked about supply and demand. I'm just showing you how to use a table to find this stuff. I could make a quick note that if you take the QD minus QS when the price is high, you'll get negative numbers. Uh, those negative numbers will be the same magnitude as the surplus because these are just backwards of each other. So I want to point out, if you ever get a negative number, either you're flipping your QS and QD or you've done something else backwards. But a negative shortage is a surplus and a negative surplus is a shortage. All right, that's all I got. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Happy econing.